today we are going to be talking about uh, the TM1 process um, function um, called execute process. So I'm just going to pull up the uh, TM1 guidebook here. Um, execute process is a very uh, simple function on its surface. It literally just lets you execute one TI process from within another TI process. So today I just want to give you kind of a quick overview of um, how that can be very useful for a company. So going into PAW here, um, I just wanted to show you the cube we're going to end up loading to. So right here we have the employees cube and within there we have an organization. Within the organizations we have different regions and then organizations that kind of roll up to each one of those regions. Um, so say for example that your company is expanding and there's a couple different um, organizations that are going to be added within uh, let's just pick the central region for example that's where i'm from so that's where we're going to go with today so that's one thing we're going to have to do is add some more organizations um, so i have a process built for that uh, just my test organization process here uh, i have a load file attached to that I can show you what that looks like very simple um, so pretty straightforward, just adding these organizations, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, um, just a couple of attributes to attach to it, uh, to load it to that dimension. We go back to the cube here. Um, there's a couple of different functions here, uh, that are rule driven. So for example, this 50 P salary, the merit percent, all these different things, anything in green here. It's highlighted uh, is affected by a rule. So a couple of other things that we'll need to run uh, to load employees for the current year for 2022 uh, is we're going to have to update um, where these rule calcs are affected. So the first one is going to be the job code. And within this cube for the job code cube, uh, we have values for the average salaries for each one of these job codes, whether it be in sales, marketing, Etc. And each year we've just done a general increase here. So one of the other processes we're going to run is just loading for 2022. So I have a TI built for that. Um, and this load file that we're using here, this job code load file, just have all the job codes. Uh, the old salary, which is really the current salary, and then the new salary is just a 10% increase, just to kind of show a difference um, for people. Um, the next thing that we're going to have to load is the job type assumptions. Uh, and within there, this is very straightforward, and it's pretty tempting here to just, uh, I guess, copy and paste it to the next column because we've only been using the 5% merit and 3% bonus for each one of the different job types, whether it be sales or uh, finance or HR or IT or any of those things. Um, but it's just common practice and I guess kind of best practices to uh, create a TI to do this in case uh, anybody decides to switch that in the future where any one of these job types would be uh, changed in the future. So they aren't all synced and everything like that. So we have another process to do that. Um, same idea but for this example it's basically just copy and pasting but uh, we're just going to go with the best practices and create a TI for that in case that changes in the future because it might um, <clears throat> the last thing that we're going to have to do is um, load the actual data into the employee cube so once all these once the organization dimension is updated with those new orgs. Um, once the job code and the job type cubes are updated for 2022, uh, we're going to have to actually load the data. So we're going to have to load data for those uh, three new orgs that I mentioned earlier. Um, so pretty straightforward process as well. All of these are fairly simple. Just wanted to give you a feel for uh, what that's going to look like just to give you a feel for the environment. Um, so we just have about uh, six different employees here. We have two going to each one of the new 
locations that we put together just with uh, the year version, all this good stuff. Uh, anyone, we might have some merit adjustments in case we want to overwrite that uh, and just their job type and job code so that we can uh, make use of those two cubes I just showed you to, to pull their actual salary. So taking a look at this process, I have using the execute process function, all you have to do for that is uh, to put in the name of the TI that you want to execute from within this process. Uh, the only additional parameters you're going to need to use um, are if the TI that you're calling uses parameters. Um, so for example, this organization one, um, we parameterized what the parent would be of the uh, elements. So for that, um, just to make use of this, I, instead of making uh, a specific um, selection now, I parameterized it within this TI so that uh, if someone were to run this TI, they can pick it from here as opposed to having it uh, be something static um, just to make use of this going forward. Um, for the other three, it's the same idea. Uh, name of the process, name of the parameter, and then the value for the parameter that you want to pass. Um, so for the last three, it's just a year that we're going to load to. So once we run this, um, we're going to do the central region. And we're going to load it for 2022. So let's check that out. Execute successfully. Awesome. So let's, let's see what that uh, ends up looking like. So if I go into organizations here, go to all members to check it out, we can see, yeah, created uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, just like we wanted. So let's just uh, keep that over here with the, make sure it's the updated list here. Year, we don't want 2019, we want 2022. Version budget, that's fine. Uh, let's be more specific here. Let's go to... Wisconsin for 2022. And as you can see, those two Wisconsin employees were loaded. Uh, FTE, their salary is included in here. Uh, that merit percent adjustment is also included in here so that their new salary reflects those values that we brought in. Um, same for Iowa. And also same for Nebraska. So as you can see, um, Having kind of like a master process is the general uh, usage of uh, execute process function. Uh, this allows you to run multiple processes at the same time, uh, make use of parameters, um, and generally um, it's a pretty common practice to also use this uh, kind of on a chore schedule. So you might run this um, once a quarter, once every six months, every year for the new budget, that kind of thing. Um, so while it's a pretty pretty straightforward um, function to use and a pretty straightforward example that I've given you here, uh, you can kind of take away that this is a, a pretty useful feature uh, to implement into a system uh, to kind of keep things running smoothly and be able to update multiple things at the same time. Um, Gives you a lot of freedom for um, other tasks that you might need within your um, company. So just want to reiterate, if anybody has any questions uh, off of this video, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, here's my LinkedIn page, which will be linked uh, at the bottom of this video. Um, I hope you guys all have a, a great rest of your day. Thank you.